Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into something pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'd say mind-blowing. Okay, you're right, mind-blowing. We're checking out the newest video from Boston Dynamics. The Robot Masters. Exactly. Yeah, I know those videos where the robots are doing backflips? Parkour. Like, it's nothing. Yeah, this one's looks, different. It is this time. It's not just about showing off. Right, it's right. It's about... They're showing us real-world stuff, hmm. practical applications. Well, exactly. This is based on an article from IE Spectrum, pretty reputable tech publication. Oh, yeah, definitely. And they actually interviewed the guy leading the project at Boston Dynamics. Scott Kundrasma. He's the research director. So let's get into it. Let's do it. What's so groundbreaking about this video? I mean, we've seen those crazy robot demos before. Right. Like I was saying, this video, it's a turning point. Okay, so what's different? It shows how robotics is going from look what we can do to look what we can use this for. Hmm, I like that. So pin us a picture, what's happening in this video? All right, so picture this, a factory setting. Atlas, their star robot, is moving engine covers. Engine covers? Yeah, moving them from a storage container to a mobile dolly. Sounds kind of simple. It does, right? But here's the thing. Yeah. Atlas is doing this all by itself. Wait, what? No one's controlling it? Nope. Completely autonomously. So no joystick, no pre-programmed movements. Exactly. That's what makes this so huge. Wow. So how is doing that? Like making decisions on the fly? Exactly. It's using vision, force sensors, and even proprioceptive sensors. Proprio what? Proprioceptive. It's like a robot's internal sense of where its body is. Oh, interesting. So it's like self-aware. Kind of. It uses all that sensory info to understand where it is, what's around it, and even react to changes. Like if something unexpected happens. Exactly. It can recover from errors like tripping or if it doesn't place the cover correctly the first time. That's nuts. So how does it even know what to do in the first place? It's all thanks to machine learning. Ah, uh, machine learning. Everyone's talking about it these days. Right. And Atlas is using it big time. So is it like thinking for itself? Well, not exactly thinking like we do. But it's making decisions in real time based on tons of data that's been trained on. Okay, so walk me through that. How does that training actually work? So they use a machine learning vision model to help Atlas recognize and find the engine covers. Okay, so it can see them, but how does it know how to pick them up and move them? They've also developed something called a grasping policy. Basically, a set of rules Atlas learns so it knows how to handle the objects correctly. Wow, it's pretty amazing. Right, it's a huge step forward. We've seen Atlas do backflips and all that. And that was already insane. Exactly, but this is different. It's showing us the practical side of all that research. Okay, so you're saying this video is like a benchmark in robotics. It is. If you compare this to the old Atlas, the hydraulic one. Oh yeah, I remember that one. It was impressive for its time. For sure. But this new version, it's so much more advanced. So this new Atlas is electric. Exactly. And it's way more agile, way more sophisticated. It shows how far we've come in robotics. And the crazy thing is, yeah. the task Atlas is doing in this video, moving engine covers, is something people do right now in factories. Whoa, that's kind of freaky, right? Like robots taking our jobs kind of freaky? <laughs> yeah, it definitely makes you think about the future of work. Okay, let's dive a little deeper into Atlas's brain. The article you mentioned, the one with the interview, what does it tell us about how Atlas actually works? Oh, there's some fascinating stuff in there. Like, did you know Atlas actually uses a CAD model of the engine cover? A CAD model? Yeah, like a digital blueprint. So it has an instruction manual, basically. Exactly. It helps Atlas understand the shape of the object, how to grasp it properly, even predict how it'll behave when picked up. So it's not just blindly grabbing things, it's actually thinking about it. Exactly. And it's learning all the time. Like, as it's working, it's building a map of its surroundings. A map, yeah. like a GPS for robots. Kind of. It maps out the work cell, the area where it's operating. Okay. And it updates that map in real time as things change. What do you mean, as things change? Like, if someone moves a tool or an obstacle, Atlas knows about it and adjusts its plan. That's insane. It's like, it's aware of its surroundings, like we are. I also read something about Atlas having a sense of direction, even when it's twisting and turning in weird ways. Yeah, that's the proprioception at work again. Even if Atlas is doing some crazy contortions, it always knows which way is up and which way is forward. So basically, it's like a gymnast who can do crazy flips, but always lands perfectly balanced. Exactly. Okay, maybe we should start taking yoga lessons from Atlas. Huh, maybe. You know what else is cool? The article said that even the team who built Atlas is still surprised by how fluid its movements are. So they're still learning from it. 
It's like they created something that's becoming more than the sum of its parts. That's crazy. Like it's evolving on its own. In a way, yeah. Okay. Before we go full sci-fi on this, let's lighten things up a bit. The article mentions something about Atlas's squatting technique and OSHA recommendations. What's that all about? Right, that was pretty funny. The author was wondering if Atlas's deep squats would pass workplace safety rules. So even robots need to follow OSHA. Well, it was a joke, but it does make you think. Yeah, if robots are going to be working alongside us, safety's a big deal. Absolutely. We need to make sure it's safe for everyone. Speaking of quirky details, we can't ignore the elephant, or rather, the hot dog, in the room. Oh, you mean the hot dog costume? Yes. Atlas rocking the hot dog look. It was a fun little Easter egg in the video. It was hilarious. You wouldn't expect to see that in a serious robotics demo. But the researcher, Kunderzama, actually talked about it in the interview. Did he? Yeah, he said they wanted to have a little fun and that the costume didn't mess with any of the sensors. So Atlas was still working perfectly, even dressed as a giant hot dog. That's awesome. So did they consider any other costumes? Kundersma said they did, but marketing's saving those for next year's video. Oh man, now we gotta wait for that. Okay, let's zoom out for a second. What does this all mean for the future of robotics? I think this video is pointing us towards a future where robots are doing complex stuff on their own. Not just pre-programmed tasks. No, they'll be adapting, learning, problem solving on the fly. That's both exciting and a little bit scary. Right. Like, what does this mean for jobs? Will robots take over everything? That's the big question, isn't it? It is. We got to talk about it, figure out how we adapt to these changes. But there's also so much potential. Yeah, like what? Think about it. Dangerous jobs, repetitive tasks. Robots could take those on. So humans can focus on other things. Exactly. Things that require creativity, critical thinking, things robots can't do. That's a good way to look at it. It's not about robots replacing us. It's about them helping us. That's a great point. Okay, this is a lot to unpack. Before we move on, let's recap the key things we've learned so far. Okay, let's do it. So this video, it's a game changer. It really is. It's showing us how robots are becoming incredibly capable, like way beyond what we thought was possible a few years ago. They're becoming more autonomous, more adaptable, and honestly, more impressive every day. And while there are valid concerns about how this will affect jobs, there's also huge potential for positive change. Absolutely. More efficiency, new industries, maybe even solving problems we haven't even thought of yet. This is where you come in, dear listener. We want to know your thoughts. Excited about the future of robotics. Concerned. A bit of both. Mm. Hit us up online, let's chat. That was a lot to take in. Right. We've only just scratched the surface of what makes this Atlas video so groundbreaking. It's not just about the wow factor. It's about what it tells us about where robotics is headed. Exactly. It yeah. really changes how we think about robots. Okay, so how? Well, for a long time, we've seen robots as these tools. You know? Yeah, like programmed to do one specific thing over and over. Right, but now? Now they're more than that. We're seeing robots that can solve problems. Like actual problems. Yeah, complex problems. They can make decisions even in situations they haven't been programmed for. You mentioned machine learning earlier. Can we break that down a bit? What does it actually mean for a robot to learn? Okay, so imagine teaching someone to ride a bike. Okay. You explain the basics. You show them how to balance. Right. But they really learn by doing by trying and failing and trying again. Trial and error. Exactly. Machine learning is similar. Instead of programming every single instruction. You just let the robot figure it out. Not exactly figure it out on their own. We give them tons of data. Data about riding bikes? Well, no, data about whatever task they need to learn. In Atlas's case, data about moving engine covers, navigating obstacles, all that. Okay, I'm starting to get it. And from that data, the robot learns patterns, develops its own strategies. So it's like learning from experience, just like we do. Exactly. So in the video, when Atlas has to deal with the challenge, like the engine cover getting stuck or something, right. it's not just following a set of pre-programmed instructions. Nope. It's using what it's learned to come up with a solution. That is so cool, but also a little scary, right? Yeah, there's definitely that side to it too. Like, what does this mean for jobs, for the future of work? Right. That's a big question we have to ask ourselves. Some people are saying robots are going to take all our jobs. Yeah, some experts believe automation will lead to big changes in the workforce. But others say it'll create new jobs. Right? right. Exactly. Like in robotics, AI, things like that. The truth is probably somewhere in between. So it's not a simple answer. It's not. We need to adapt. Be prepared for the changes that are coming. Adapt how? Well, for one, we need to think about education and training. So people can learn the skills they'll need in this new world. Exactly. 
and we need to think about policies that help workers who might be displaced by automation. So it's not just about individuals adapting, it's about society as a whole. Right. We have to adapt together. It's a lot to think about, for sure. It is. But it's important to approach these changes with a sense of optimism, not just fear. I like that. Throughout history, new technologies have often led to progress. They've made our lives better in many ways. Exactly. And I think the same can be true for robotics. We just need to be smart about how we develop and use this technology. That's a good point. It's easy to get caught up in the potential downsides, but there are upsides too, right? Absolutely. Imagine robots taking on dangerous or repetitive tasks. So humans don't have to risk their lives or get bored to tears. Right. It could free us up to do more creative, more fulfilling work. And what about fields like healthcare or education? Robots could help there too, right? Definitely. They could assist doctors, help teachers. Potentially even help us solve big problems like climate change. Exactly. The possibilities are huge. Uh, but it's up to us to make sure we're using this technology for good. Wow. Okay, before we get too lost in the future, let's come back to the Atlas video. There are still some things I'm curious about. Like what? Well, I'm really fascinated by how Atlas builds that map of its surroundings. Ah, yeah, the real-time mapping. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It's pretty amazing. Atlas uses cameras, depth sensors, all kinds of fancy stuff to gather information about its environment. And then it creates a map from that. It creates a 3D model of the work cell, like a dynamic map that's always being updated. So it's constantly learning about its surroundings. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what allows it to move around safely, avoid obstacles. But even if things change unexpectedly. Exactly. It can adapt to changes on the fly. Wow, that's incredible. I'm also really impressed by how Atlas moves. Right, it's so fluid, so agile. Almost like a human. It's a combination of hardware and software. Atlas has these custom-designed actuators, which are like its muscles. Okay. And the software controls those muscles with incredible precision. It's like it's dancing. There's definitely an art to it. It's amazing what they've been able to achieve. It really is. Makes you wonder what they'll come up with next. Okay, back to the future for a second. All right. We talked about jobs that robots might replace. Mm. But what about new jobs? What kind of skills will people need in this future with all these robots around? It's a great question. It's something a lot of people are thinking about. So what are the hot skills of the future? Well, robotics engineering is a big one. Makes sense. Got to build those robots. And software development, AI programming. The brains behind the bots. Exactly. And then there's data analysis, machine what? learning. Because robots generate tons of data, right? Tons. We'll need people who can make sense of it all. And what about working with robots? Ah, uh, yes. Human-robot interaction. So not just technical skills. Right. It's also about communication, collaboration, being able to work alongside robots effectively. It's a whole new way of thinking about work. It is. And the most important skill of all might be adaptability. Adaptability. Being able to learn new things quickly, adjust to change. That's a good life skill in general, I think. It is. And in this rapidly changing world, it's going to be more important than ever. I'm getting a bit of future shock just yeah. thinking about it all. I know what you mean. But it's exciting too, right? Oh, definitely. It's a whole new world of possibilities opening up. It's up to us to make sure we're ready for it. Exactly. We have to embrace the opportunities while being mindful of the challenges. This has been an amazing conversation. I've enjoyed it. I'm feeling inspired, but also like I need to go back to school and learn some new skills. Huh? <laughs> we all need to keep learning, right? That's the key. Well said. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. The amazing capabilities of Atlas, the future of work, the importance of adapting to a changing world. And don't forget the hot dog costume. Oh, yeah, we can't forget that. Okay, before we wrap things up, we want to hear from you, our listeners. What are your thoughts on all this? Yeah. Excited? Concerned? Let us know. You know, watching Atlas do its thing, Yeah. it makes you wonder about the people who created it. The minds behind the machine. Exactly. Like, what drives them? I think it's got to be a mix of things. The challenge, for sure. Yeah, like solving these crazy problems. Pushing the boundaries of what's possible with robotics. <laughs> it's got to be a bit like an obsession, right? Maybe a little. But there's also that thrill of discovery, you know? Seeing something you built come to life. And do things that have never been done before. I bet there's a huge sense of accomplishment. Oh, for sure. But I think there's got to be something more, too. What do you mean? Like a deeper motivation. Okay, I'm intrigued. What are you thinking? I think a lot of these researchers, they want to make a difference in the world. Use robots for good. Exactly. 
solve real-world problems, improve people's lives. Like using robots in dangerous situations or to help people with disabilities. Yeah, exactly. Or in healthcare, disaster relief. The possibilities are endless. It's almost like a sci-fi dream come true, right? Kind of. But it's happening now. Yeah. And the cool thing is, yeah. we're not just talking about robots replacing humans. It's about collaboration. Yes. Robots and humans working together, each doing what they do best. That's a really cool way to think about it. It's not about us versus them. It's about us and them. Exactly. And I think that's what makes robotics so exciting. It's not just about building machines. It's about building a better future. Well said. And speaking of the future, we got to talk about the elephant in the room again. The hot dog. Well, not the hot dog itself, but what it represents. The future of work. Right. Robots and jobs. It's a big concern. It is. We can't ignore it. So how do we prepare for this future where robots are doing more and more? Well, education is key. Equipping people with the right skills. Exactly. And those skills, they go beyond just the technical stuff. Like what? Problem solving, critical thinking, creativity. So the human stuff. The stuff that makes us human. That's what's going to be valuable in this new world. It's like because robots can't do that. Not yet. Anyway. Mm. But even if they could... There are some things that will always be uniquely human. Like empathy, compassion, the ability to connect with others. Exactly. Those are the things we need to nurture, to focus on. It's about finding that balance, right, between technology and humanity. Yes. Using technology to enhance our lives, mm. not replace us. That's a really important message. And I think it ties back to what you said earlier about the motivation of the people building these robots. The desire to make a positive impact. To use technology for good. It's a powerful idea. It is. And it's something we all need to keep in mind as we move into this new era of robotics. Because the future isn't something that just happens to us. We have a say in it. We can choose to shape it. Exactly. And I think the key is to stay informed, stay curious, and most importantly, stay hopeful. Hopeful that we can build a future where technology and humanity thrive together. That's the dream, isn't it? It is. Well, on that note, We've reached the end of our deep dive into the world of Atlas and the future of robotics. I hope everyone enjoyed it. It's been an incredible journey full of mind-blowing technology, thought-provoking questions, and maybe even a little bit of hope for the future. And a hot dog or two. Can't forget the hot dog. A big thank you to our guests for sharing their expertise with us. It's been a pleasure. And to you, our listeners, thank you for joining us on this deep dive. Keep those questions coming. Keep those conversations going. And as always, stay curious.